If you've been thinking about buying a PlayStation Vita in 2019, mind you, now is probably a good time to do it, and for three main reasons. Number one, it's still really awesome, but number two, it's probably not going to get any cheaper to buy and collect for it. And then number three, the PlayStation Store on the Vita, its final days are probably numbered in terms of support from Sony. So let's get right into it. Why is PlayStation Vita still relevant and considered a good purchase, even in 2019? And I would hope it's obvious, but it's the games. As is the case with any aged platform, it now has a full library of games. And not just a few, this isn't the Dreamcast or the Saturn. Not to knock those platforms, they do have a lot of games, but the library for Vita is massive. And it's well into the thousands when accounting for PSP, PS1, and digital-only PS Vita games. There's a great selection of exclusives from Sony's IP, and these are your big budget console quality games that were initially promised when the platform launched in late 2011, early 2012. Uncharted Golden Abyss, Killzone Mercenary, Little Big Planet PS Vita, Soul Sacrifice, Soul Sacrifice Delta, Freedom Wars, and Touch My Katamari were some of the standouts, and they fully delivered on being big experiences on the go. Uncharted Golden Abyss to this day, as a launch PS Vita game, still stands as one of the most visually impressive games for a portable. It was nothing. I'm telling you, it was Drake. You tell your men to up their game or there's gonna be a lot less of them around come payday. Son of a bitch. I'll see you in hell. Then there's the games that did see console ports, but they still play really great on Vita, like Hotshots Golf World Invitational, Assassin's Creed Liberation, or Tearaway. And Tearaway, I'd argue, is best played on Vita given the unique aspect of the game and the narrative that it was trying to convey. And then there's the smaller scale, digital-only games, and there's a lot of them, and I mean a lot. There's so many different genres, and there's always something for everybody to play. And personally, I feel these are the kind of games that are best played on a handheld. You see so many of these games today on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and to me, I just want to keep playing them on a smaller screen. And I think that's why I love my Switch so much today when it comes to these kind of games. But the thing is, a lot of people are turning to Vita as the ultimate legacy machine. And for good reason, you can play a ton of PS1 classics on it, and you can even download digital PSP games. The best part about that is that you can remap the controls to the touchscreen or the second stick, so you can make first-person shooters from the PSP days play just as they should. And then there's also native PS2 remasters that Sony released. And while some of them were rush ports with good to bad performance, most of them are fine. Playing games like Sly Cooper or Final Fantasy X on Vita were great, and more importantly, they felt so natural. And no Vita video is really complete without the mention of Persona 4 Golden, a game widely considered the platform's best. And sure, it's a PS2 game, but this is the best version of that PS2 game. Ask any Vita owner, they've probably played Persona 4, and they'll probably tell you they've sunk 100 hours into it. Now here's a really good reason why you might consider a Vita today. If you buy a lot of PSN games, or you're very diligent in downloading every game from the PS Plus Instant Game Collection, you could already be sitting on a huge library of games, a luxury that you really don't get when buying a new game platform. You would just log into your PSN ID on your new Vita and check your download history. Because of Sony's cross-buy initiative, you might have tons of Vita versions ready to go. Some of these games might have cross-play or cross-save functionality. So you could download these games free of charge, and then even transfer save files over to the respective PS3 or PS4 versions. Some games might offer local multiplayer with Vita being an extra controller and screen. This was definitely one of the cooler things Sony did, and it adds incredible value to used Vitas. Now if you want to talk about what you can't do anymore in 2019, here you go. Social apps like Facebook have long had their support pulled and I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to use those anyway on a Vita. Then there's the Near app, and this was Sony's weird street pass-like application that nobody used, or realistically, they even knew how to use. And then there's PlayStation Now, which at one point was available on the PS Vita. You could use this to stream PS3 games. Again, no one ever used this, and Sony pulled the support. So at this point, you could really argue that these are features that aren't really going to be missed because they weren't even used in the first place. Okay, so you're on board, you want a Vita, now what? Well, you've actually got a few choices. Sony released one version initially, and like they always do, released a slimmer version down the road a few years later. The first model is PCH-1000 and the second PCH-2000. And there will be different variations of that model number depending on the region. 
So here's a breakdown of the key differences between those models. PCH2000 is 20% thinner and 15% lighter, and you get one hour of extra battery life. PCH1000 used a proprietary charging port, but the 2000 moved over to a micro USB, which is a much better choice since micro USBs are pretty much everywhere, and they're very cheap. There was an accessory port on top of the 1000, and this was removed in the 2000. This is also fine because no game or company ever made a peripheral for it, so it's not going to be missed. The back touchpad on the 2000 is also smaller, which I particularly liked because I always brushed the back touchpad on the first model by mistake. Now the 2000 also had 1GB of onboard memory, which you weren't actually allowed to use if you had a memory card, which you kind of need a memory card anyway, so you couldn't use that 1GB. So that was kind of really weird at the time. The big difference is that the slimmer Vita uses an LCD screen, where the original uses an OLED screen, and there's no doubt about it, the OLED produces true colors and looks fantastic. But, I still find that the LCD looks good, and it's not a total deal breaker when you're counting for the slimmer form factor and all the other benefits that you get. Now some might like the weight of the original, so if that's more your thing than the original with the OLED is definitely the way to go. And then there's the PlayStation Vita TV, and this was called PlayStation TV in the West, which was a cheap alternative to play some Vita games on the big screen. This was even more of a failure as far as Vita Impact is concerned, and game compatibility is still an issue despite there being an on-screen cursor. Now what you could do is use Remote Play and essentially make this a second PS4 without actually buying a second PS4. But while we're on the topic of Remote Play, let's cover that. Remote Play of course still works with the PS4, but in actuality it's still not really a desirable way to play PS4 games. The text size and the on-screen HUDs for most games just do not match up well at all, and then using the back touchpad to replace L2, L3, R2, and R3 is incredibly cumbersome depending on the game. And then there's the simple fact that the game will sport a low resolution and you'll likely face very heavy input lag. Sony always touted this feature, but let's all be honest here, the amount of people that actually played games from start to finish this way with remote play could probably be counted with my two hands. So let's get real, why should you buy one now? Sony only sold 16 million PlayStation Vitas, and with physical games, some of the best sellers were lucky to break a million units. The Vita market is not as big as more successful platforms and will inherently be more costly to buy and collect for down the road. Right now the prices look okay, but the system and games are holding a decent value, and they likely won't decrease anymore and will only go up. And that's not to say that they will go up, but in theory they could. If anything, now is a good time to secure a specific color variant of the Vita that you might be interested in, because there actually was a wide range of colors to choose from. I really like the red and blue PCH1000 models, those are very nice looking. But you might also want to buy the physical games that you know are very niche and might be hard to come by later. And worse yet, Vita memory cards are also still very expensive, and you can expect these won't go down in price either so it might be best to pick one of these up now. And now we get to our final point, which is that Sony is removing PS Vita games from the Instant Game Collection on PlayStation Plus, which I find to be a pretty obvious foreshadow of Sony ceasing support for the PlayStation Store on Vita. Now I still fully expect Sony to keep it going for all of 2019, and whenever they decide to see support, they'll probably announce a pretty sizable deadline, so you'll have time. But getting your downloads without the PlayStation Store might become a huge chore, since I'm expecting Sony will close the store on Vita, but still allow the purchase and transfer of Vita content from a PC or maybe even a PS4 or 5 down the road. This was their solution when they closed the PlayStation Store on PSP. You could still use a PS3 to manage and transfer your digital PSP content. It was a chore, but it was still possible. So let's wrap this up, PlayStation Vita is still a great handheld and it aged very well. The console quality games still look great for the 2019 portable standard, so whether you're buying it for that, or the smaller games, or even the PS1 classics, you really cannot go wrong, even if you're considering buying one in 2019. I already forgot the controls for this game. Alright, you know, what time is I'm, I'm not even going to lie, I legit started playing my Vita while trying to do the intro and outro to this video, so... <laughs> See, that's how great it is, though. You just kind of get sidetracked and you get lost playing it. Um, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates here on YouTube. That's it for me in this video, and I'll see you all in my next one. You take it easy.